Let's go. Good morning, Knoxville. I'm Chris Cooley with CBE 240 News. News, weather, sports. Let's jump right into the weather. You can see here that uh, we have a cloudy few days ahead of us. Um, let's talk about what this means um, for your daily dose of radiation. But before that, let's just talk about the temperatures. Knoxville, 49 degrees. Lenore City, 48 degrees. Down in Teleco Plains, chilly 48 degrees. All right, that's good enough. Let's jump to Taylor Weisskittle. Over to you. Important that vitamin D is. So today we're going to talk about how the clouds affect solar radiation. Now our bright sun emits solar radiation that comes down and on your average day would just come right straight through, right to you. But since there are clouds, a lot of different things are going to be happening. So the clouds prevent some of the solar radiation from reaching the ground because um, it comes down and then reflects back off up into the atmosphere. Or it can come down and be absorbed by the cloud, making the cloud's molecules have higher energy. Um, now I do want to emphasize that this is only happening with some of it. So some of it is still going straight through. And the reason for this is clouds are gray bodies they are not um, perfect absorbers or emitters like black bodies. Uh-oh, folks, we have some breaking news. We're going to go cut this segment short. All right, going over to Chris at the weather desk. Storm Sangoro has evolved into Hurricane Sangoro. Knoxville is preparing for the worst, and we are here to keep you updated on the latest developments. Now, in the eye of the hurricane, there is an area with extremely low pressure. We are talking about air here, so we have to keep in mind and consider pressure modeling with a compressible fluid. On the next slide, you can see that pressure is a function of density, gravity, and height. Um, with density, it's mass over volume, and it's changing. You'll see that later. Uh, gravity, it's a function of length over time squared, and height is the atmospheric height. Uh, what this means is that air density will change with height. As you can see in this illustration, as you come closer to sea level, gas particles become more densely packed due to the gravitational pull of the Earth. So what does this mean for our pressure? Uh, we now go back to Taylor, who has a conceptual problem to help us visualize what, concept, what a compressible fluid uh, pressure profile would look like. So if we look at this column as the eye of the hurricane, what would the pressure change look like as we increase in height? Once again, it is a compressible fluid, so we cannot have a linear relationship as shown in D. So that eliminates choice D for us. We know that pressure is highest at the ground level where the molecules are most densely packed. So we know that that leaves either A, A, or C. We also know that pressure cannot be negative. So as you can see in choice C, this function is going down towards the negative range and crosses the x-intercept, which leaves us with A which is an exponential decay function and will never actually cross the x-intercept. Now, in a CBE240 news first, we have decided to experimentally determine if these results are indeed true. Chris and I will be launching a weather balloon into the eye of Hurricane Sangoro to take vital measurements for Knoxville. Now, this is a CBE241 first, and probably a first in television in general, and it will be dangerous. But we are dedicated to bringing you the information you need to know. Are you ready? Yes, Chris, I'm ready! Three, two, one, launch! 